Hey everybody, this is Joseph and Ray back again for another Ask EVGA episode, one of our personal favorite segments yep. to film and to uh, field questions for and all that. Um, so we're here, this is this should be number six now, right? We just discussed that, we think it's number six. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is, you know, the segment where we have you ask questions in the comments below and uh, we answer them for you. So. Uh, this week it's a little bit special because we have some follow-ups to one of the questions, yes. which is kind of cool. Um, so, as I always say, let's jump right in. Right. Um, so this one's going to be from Joe Tippett. Yes. Uh, he had contacted us before regarding some cooling issues with his GPU. Right. Uh, and uh, and we gave him some advice on sort of adjustments and stuff. So he came back with a few more questions, mm -hmm. uh, and we're just going to ask you all of those. Okay. Um, so to start off, he says, because I live in the UK, will it be any more difficult for the RMA process? Shouldn't be more difficult. Uh, it just means that if you're in the UK, you're going to contact either UK support or EU support. Either way is fine. You'll get in contact with the correct team. Um, RMA in Europe is very similar to RMA in North America. There are some differences, but uh, nothing that you need to worry too much about. Um, the replacement should still fall within the normal one to three business days for processing uh, when it reaches the facility. So, on to the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, do I need to return my GPU before I get a new one sent out? Um, that is one RMA type. So, in the EU region, if you do a standard RMA, you send in that unit, or in this case, the graphics card. We receive it, then we send you a replacement. If you don't want to wait or you can't have your system down, uh, the European uh, team offers an advanced RMA, a little bit different than the North American advanced RMA. That is a premium paid for program, a little bit different. Uh, the advanced RMA on the EU side um, is very similar to our cross shipment. It's yeah. a full collateral, we send out the replacement first, hence the advance, um, and then once we get you that replacement, you then ship your original back, and we do a full refund of that collateral. So um, that is an option if you don't want to have any kind of downtime uh, for your system, or you can't afford to have any kind of downtime. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I do need to send it back, do you guys provide return shipping, or do I have to pay for it myself? Uh, it depends. Um, you'll want to ask the EU team directly on that one. Um, oftentimes they can help if it's in a very immediate issue. You just purchased the product, you just received it, and you're already having issues with it. They can help you. Um, normally, uh, for an RMA, EVJ would cover the shipping to get the replacement to you, and then we would ask the EU cover the shipping to get the original back to EVJ, whether that's an advanced or a standard RMA. Yeah, and typically we have something like 30 days from the purchase date or 30 days from an RMA. Is that the same in the EU? Uh, it should be. Okay. Uh, and then he also says, is there a chance I'll get my GPU replaced with a different model? Um, there's always a chance of that, but realistically we tried to replace with the exact same model. Uh, it won't be the same card. It will have a different serial number. It'll be already be a tested replacement that we have available. Um, but uh, it, there's the possibility, if they don't have that exact model, um, that they will go with something of equal or better performance. Um, can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, if I do have to send my GPU back, will you be able to provide temporary replacement? Uh, as I'm using a Xeon and it doesn't have an iGPU, so he'd basically be down right. in the meantime. So yeah, uh, we don't offer any kind of temporary replacements as far as the RMA, but that is why we offer the advanced RMA. Right. So, yes and no, maybe. <laughs> Uh, if I do get a replacement, this is the last question, mm -hmm. if I do get a replacement card, does the warranty start over again, or do I keep the same war warranty length from my previous? Right. Uh, the replacement card will carry over the warranty of the original. So if you had a three-year warranty on that original card, maybe you've had it for about a year, there's about two years of warranty left, those remaining two years will then automatically go over to the replacement card. The replacement card should be automatically registered to your account. If it's not, however, um, you just register it to your account the same way as you would any product and then again that warranty will carry over automatically all right so that's that first question obviously a bunch of questions in there <laughs> but i think it's a lot of important information we get a lot yeah. of rma questions so wanted to cover that ground especially for the eu side um, which doesn't get as much coverage yeah um let's go on to our second question here this is by uh, hatchem 99 why dose msi stuff catch on fire but yours don't <laughs> well Moving on. Very well. I, I think we could just pass that one up. <laughs> Next question. 
Uh, I'll ask this to you since <laughs> okay. uh, we didn't really answer that one. This is by AJ Patel. Uh, are you guys going to do a comparison against the Oris Water Force Extreme versus the EVGA Hybrid FTW? Mm. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I have a I'm not sure which too. model of the uh, FTW, but uh, well, that's true too, because um, it's not saying what card exactly. Uh, but yeah, it, it, we don't typically, we're not going to compare our card direct to a competitor's right. card. Right. Um, that's usually not something you're going to see the manufacturers right. doing. Um, I've never seen the BMW test their new 3 Series versus the Mercedes C-Class. It'd be an odd thing to do. Yeah. Um, so that's why there's independent reviewers out there, uh, and they do great work. Yeah, and that's exactly. I mean, you should go, you know, take... Search on YouTube, see if there's already somebody independent who's already done this. Um, uh, see if you can find something maybe on forums or online, or even ask in our forums to see if somebody can provide right. real-world sure. testing results from their own Aorus card. And my follow-up question to that kind of was, um, is it Aorus or is it Aorus? Aorus or Aorus? Mm. Gosh, I I've actually asked, um, I, I go out to the events and I've right. asked several gigabyte what do um, they say? Guys, <laughs> they should know more than some I would. Some say Aorus, some say Aris. Okay. So, I don't so know. there's no official answer. Okay. Well, yeah. All right. Uh, the, uh, and a friend of mine who works at Gigabyte actually told me uh, uh, Aris, and okay. I tend to believe him a bit. So okay. we'll see. I, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Not we'll see, but I don't know. Okay. So this one's for you. It's from Raymond Schmidt. Uh, and it is What can I do with the RGB fan headers on my Z370 boards? What products, fans, are supported and I have thermal take RGB fans now. Do I need different fans to make use of the ports? And can I use multiple ones ports somehow? Can I use multiple from one port somehow? Oh. Um, okay. Uh, I was initially a little confused by this because of the kind of the RGB fan header thing. Um, our fans run on, our boards rather have PWM or DC uh, headers on them. They're not specific RGB fan headers. Um, but as you've tested on your own X299 board um, with thermal tape RGB fans, uh, they should work just fine. Um, mm -hmm. Can't guarantee anything because we haven't tested everything and all the fans are a little bit different. Some may have hubs, yeah. some may have changed their hub design, um, some may require that you have a fan uh, header and an RGB header which our Z370 boards do have dedicated RGB headers. Again, they're not fan headers, they are for like RGB strips. Yeah. Um, so it gives you that type of ability. So it's really down to, to what the fan supports um, and what uh, what uh, it requires as far as connections. Um, this is another one of those, like with the comparison question last time, um, a really great question for our forums uh, because we have so many members. I'm sure there are people out there who have the exact configuration that you're looking to set up and they can tell you, you know, any of the uh, issues that they may have run into or maybe it was smooth sailing and they'll tell you, yeah, just go ahead and do it. Yeah, and from my personal experience, I have the Thermal Take Ring fans. I actually have the first generation, so okay. they have less LEDs in them and they don't do the sort sure. of cycling cool sure. effects as much. Right. Um, uh, but they do have that, that cool outer ring that you can see the colors and they do RGB. Um, that has a hub. So, and I know that the newer generation also has okay. a hub as well. So, um, I've had other RGB fans also had hubs. Usually if it's kind of got a little bit more advanced lighting controls and stuff, you're going to be looking at a hub okay. situation. Um, to do the effects. Yeah, real basic. Just if you, want it to, if you wanted to set the fans to one particular solid color okay. and change that a bit, that's, that's generally something you're going to just plug into the motherboard okay. itself cool. into a normal, I think it's PWM. P PWM, probably, generally. yeah. yeah. Uh, next question here. Uh, could y'all... Uh, this is actually by, I should say, Michael Morales. Um, he wants to know if we can do a more comprehensive video of how to overclock GPUs for beginners. Um, well, if you haven't seen already, Michael, we do have the video posted that Ray did where it's kind of overclocking for beginning, for, for sure. excuse me, for sure. beginners. Um, I was thinking of doing sort of an uncut version of that because we did have to cut it down for time purposes, sure. but uh, actually Ray in, in included a lot of really better, more granular, detailed information 
on overclocking when he was doing that, and I had to cut a lot of that out, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where um, I don't know that we'll ever be done doing overclocking videos because it is really important to our products. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure that's something we're going to revisit uh, probably in more detail. Um, but I think um, from his standpoint, the beginner side of it is good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of explaining you know, why are you overclocking? Well, you know, what is overclocking? Really get into the minutia um, of the mm -hmm. of the things that we kind of take for granted um, because we've been doing this but that if you're somebody you bought your first GPU and you want to see how much performance you can get out of it you may not know what that is so it's definitely a good suggestion um, I know that those type of videos that have kind of a broad appeal um, you know like how to clock an over uh, or how to overclock a card uh, have broad appeal and those can get a lot yeah. of hits um, so that's something that uh, we want to look at pretty pretty carefully yeah we will be doing more and uh, you know as new generations of GPUs come out um, We'll yeah. definitely be doing that as well for new gens. Sure. So hopefully uh, you'll see something soon. I might even do the uncut version of, of that uh, video that we already did. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I think I was like 25 pounds heavier in that video. <laughs> Possibly. I'm about the same. <laughs> All right. Next question uh, for you, Ray, mm -hmm. from f Forever. Forever? Yes, many Fs there. Uh, does the H370 Stinger allow BCLK overclocking? Will you make a Z390 Stinger? Okay. Uh, I did ask one of our product team about this because I wasn't 100% sure. Um, we did, I did the unboxing for the Stinger, but I haven't had that much hands-on time with it. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's not really any base clock increases that you can do. If you're enabling an XMP profile on your memory, it may increase it ever so slightly, um, but not to the extent that you would ever really see a performance difference. That's mostly just a match timings and whatnot. Um, and even if you were to have full control of base clock, I'd be surprised. Nominal base clock for any Intel processor is going to be 100 megahertz. Um, I would be really surprised if you're going to be able to get of more than 102, 103 um, because of how they've changed the architecture over the years um, because now when you're base clock overclocking you're overclocking things like uh, PCIe slots and even USB ports so um, you're going way um, so many things have to move up um, that it sort of becomes out of spec and it's kind of a way to make a system unstable pretty quickly so um, not really a way of getting around the lockdown that the H rather than the Z has um, for the Stinger motherboard um, um, but I do get uh, where you're coming from, and I, I feel like that's where the second part of this question is coming from, uh, which is in regards to a Z390 Stinger. Um, I don't have any information on, on next generation Intel platforms, nor do I know what's coming. Um, so you'll have to stay tuned on that, yeah. um, but uh, unfortunately we don't have any information at this time. Yeah. All right, uh, last question. Are we asking? I mean, who's asking? I think we lost our order a little bit, but um, we'll both answer this one. Yeah, this is really for both of us. Marco the Noob says, why are you so awesome? Why are you so awesome? That's a really difficult question to answer and to not look like a really self-absorbed person. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't feel very awesome today because we're not wearing the awesome shirts. We're not wearing the awesome shirts. And uh, those shirts are usually what make us, like, extra awesome. And this one's and been through the wash a few times, so we're going to have to make this thing black and post. Yeah, you're fading a bit, so <laughs> yeah, we're going to bring the black levels we're down gonna, a bit. Yeah. Um, this shirt, this is the one that I designed. So. That is the one. Joseph designed this exact there shirt. Yep. Uh, that's why I'm, uh, why I'm awesome. Yeah. And uh, Marco, we think you're awesome. We think you're awesome. Actually, if we're serious about this for a second, uh, why are you so awesome? If there's anything that makes us awesome, it's the audience out there who obviously uh, were in the early stages of making this YouTube channel a little bit different, bringing yeah. some more new content to you guys. Um, and so it's mostly a thank you to you guys because why are we awesome? Because you guys watch. So yes. um, we have only you guys to thank. Yeah, we really do appreciate it. And um, I didn't know you were going to get so sentimental oh, there. But, gosh. you know, yeah, in reality, we were very appreciative and we are trying to try some new things. Right. So. You know, if you do have some comments to leave below as far as um, questions, please do that. But also suggestions. Yeah. We always welcome suggestions yeah. down there. We've, we've, and we've gone taken through, we've many fixed lighting, we fixed audio and stuff like that yes. because we know that there were issues in previous videos. We've hammered a lot of that stuff out. Um, so. 
Thank you guys for watching. This has been another Ask EVGA. As ever, put your questions down in the comments and we'll get that on a future episode. Goodbye. Have a good one. Hopefully it didn't overheat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, where can you